Hey guys, how's it going? This is Wad from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we're doing a comparison against the Samsung Galaxy S4 versus the iPhone 5. Now, these are the two big top selling smartphones in the world right now. The Samsung Galaxy S4 is the predecessor to the S3, which outsold some of the iPhones even. Now, a lot of people will be interested in seeing what these two phones offer and how they stack up against each other. So without any further delays, let's get right into the comparison. Okay guys, so the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the physical dimensions of the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the iPhone 5. So the Samsung Galaxy S4 measures about 136.6 millimeters in height, 69.8 millimeters in width. The iPhone 5 on the other hand is 58 8.6 millimeters in width and 123.8 millimeters in its height. So it's not as tall or as wide as the Samsung Galaxy S4. So if you want to have a smaller footprint, the iPhone is definitely the more compact device. Similarly, the iPhone 5 in terms of thickness is a little bit thinner than the Samsung Galaxy S4 measuring about 7.6 millimeters versus the S4 7.9 millimeters. Now, as you would expect, the Samsung Galaxy S4 is definitely the larger device. So you expect to see a little bit of a weight difference too. So it measures about 130 grams versus the iPhone 5's 112 grams. Next, in terms of just pure design, I do think that both these phones look really, really great. In terms of materials the iPhone 5 in terms of build quality is made out of high quality aluminum and glass and the Samsung Galaxy S even though it's made out of plastic it's definitely higher quality plastic than you would expect of most cheaper phones so you're definitely getting a premium built product that should last a fairly long time now one of the major highlights of both these devices are the high resolution screens that they both come with now the GS4 has a screen that measures exactly 5 inch and the iPhone 5 has a screen that measures exactly 4 inch. Now even though both the screens are only different by an inch, there is a massive difference in terms of resolution. The new Samsung Galaxy S4 has a native resolution of 1920 by 1080 now that's a pentile display. And the iPhone 5 has a standard RGB screen that measures about 1136 by 640. And with some of those numbers, you'll definitely notice that the screen density on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is definitely a lot higher than the iPhone 5 which has a PPI rating of 336 versus the S4's rating of about 441 PPI. Now those of course are just some arbitrary numbers in real life, based on my personal experience, I do have to say that the S4 delivers some really nice, crisp, vibrant images that are definitely on par with the iPhone. And at times, you definitely notice a little bit more fine detail, especially if you're close to the screen. So if you're anyone who does a lot of reading on a smartphone and requires um, extra real estate and extra clarity in terms of fine text, I do really like the Samsung Galaxy S4. You can see a lot of fine detail on that screen although I still have to appreciate that the iPhone based on its size and overall screen resolution is still a really great sharp screen that delivers some really vibrant colors. So in terms of hardware, the GS4 is boasting a quad core processor measuring about 1.6 gigahertz with two gigs of RAM. Now the Apple iPhone is using the A6 processor, which is clocked in about 1.2 gigahertz, it's a dual core processor of course, with one gig of RAM. Now even though there is a big hardware difference, funny enough because the iOS is so highly optimized for the Apple A6 everything runs extremely smooth still on the iPhone 5. It's not laggy at all. It should be not considered to be a slow device whatsoever at this point. That being said, when we open up simple day-to-day -day applications, you're not gonna see a major difference between these two devices. Even though the hardware on the Samsung Galaxy S is fairly more superior than the Apple iPhone, you're not gonna see a massive difference in terms of loading times and how fast different applications load up, how fast web pages come up. It's not going to be any difference whatsoever in terms of my test. What you're going to find a difference is on next generation applications that use a lot more CPU and GPU processing resources to run 
faster and more efficiently. So applications such as graphically intensive games are definitely going to take advantage of what the S4 has to offer and with the 2 gigs of RAM you're also going to have some pretty powerful multitasking abilities on this phone which is great because there's also a multi-view mode on the Samsung Galaxy S4 much like you would find on the Samsung Galaxy Note products. Now back a couple of years ago when the iPhone was a really popular and dominant phones, everyone wanted to create the iPhone killer phone. Now of course the Samsung Galaxy S4 along with a lot of other Android and Windows based phones obviously are a lot more powerful than this current generation iPhone. So you can definitely apply that term when we start doing some of these Geekbench benchmarks. And if you notice the Geekbench score that we got on our GS4, you'll notice that it's almost three times as much much as what we got on the iPhone 5. Now of course again we have to consider the iPhone 5 is an older product using last generation CPU and GPU technology but it gives you a fair comparison if you have an iPhone of what the potential of the GS4 is in comparison. Now if you take a look at the features list on the Samsung Galaxy S4 you'll notice that it's literally miles long. This thing has like a ton of features. It can track your eye movements. You can scroll with your hand. You can uh, magnify with just hovering your finger over the screen. Most of these features work pretty well but some of them really don't work all that well at all. But some of the standard stuff like swiping your hand back and forth to change pictures and to move next and forward on web pages and images works really well. It also has a quick glance feature so you can just hover your hand over the phone and it'll show you the date and time and some of your email notifications and things like that so really great next generation feature set on the Samsung Galaxy S4 and I'm sure we'll see a lot of these incorporated into the next generation iPhone so we'll have to see what the next generation iPhone has because the current generation has none of these features. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of a more fair comparison and compare the cameras of both the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the iPhone 5. We'll start with the front facing cameras on both devices. The front facing camera on the GS4 takes about 2 megapixel stills and captures 1080p video at 30 frames per second. On the iPhone it captures 1.2 megapixel stills with 720p video at 30 frames per second. So when we start comparing it side by side you'll definitely notice a pretty significant difference between the two cameras. The GS4 is definitely sharper which we can certainly expect given that it's 1080p versus 720p. It also renders colors a lot more realistically with vibrant saturated overall look and an overall picture quality that is more representative of real life. Now, when we start looking at the rear facing camera, we also notice a difference in terms of image quality between these two devices. The Samsung Galaxy S4 has a 13 megapixel stills camera functionality, which is definitely a lot higher than the 8 megapixels on the iPhone 5, but they both record 1080p at 30 frames per second video. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the stills of the rear facing camera of both these devices. Now, even though the GS4 has the higher 13 megapixel still functionality. In reality, both the cameras produce some really similar looking photos. In fact, the color rendition seems almost identical. You find that both cameras deliver some really great crisp images that are really astonishing for smartphones. Of course, in terms of resolution, the S4 has the edge over the iPhone, but in terms of fine sharpness and clarity, you really don't see that big of a difference. If we take a look at this crop over here, you'll notice that the text is just as fine on the iPhone as it is on the S4. In fact, at times it seems a little bit more clear because perhaps the S4 doesn't have as good of a lens as the iPhone 5 does. This similarity in image quality is also mirrored when we start looking at the 1080p functionality of the rear facing cameras on both these devices, which again look very, very similar. Now you don't have a resolution edge over the Samsung S4, so again the clarity is pretty much identical and the colors again look really, really vibrant on both cameras and both produce some really great video for a cell phone. 
Now, the final aspect that we're going to talk about is the battery and expandability of both these two devices. In terms of battery, the Samsung S4 has a 2600 milliamp hour battery, which is rated to up to 15 hours of talk time. Now, of course, it's pretty hard to get 15 hours of talk time if you're using this phone on a constant basis with using its LTE speeds and everything. So realistically, you'll probably get somewhere around 12 hours of talk time. Now, the iPhone has a much smaller battery than the Samsung Galaxy S4. Of course it consumes less power based on its smaller screen and more efficient processors. It will give you about eight hours of talk time and if you use it pretty conservatively you'll probably get at least 10 hours but if you're looking for the longer lasting phone in terms of battery life the S4 definitely has the edge and additionally it has another edge because the battery like most Samsung products is user replaceable so you can remove the back and get more battery and if you're on a long trip, you can have as many batteries as you want and run the phone for as long as you want. Additionally, you also have expandable memory up to 64 gigs if you have a micro SD card and it gives it a lot more flexibility in the future. The iPhone, of course, has none of these expandable features. But other than that, guys, if you have any questions about anything I talked about in this comparison video, make sure to leave it on a comment down below. And uh, please leave your opinions on which phone you prefer. Do you like the Apple's clean style or do you like the feature-packed galore of the Samsung Galaxy S4? I think I'm kind of halfway. I love the Samsung Galaxy S4's innovative kind of design and features and overall semi ease of use but you can't really complain with the iphone and at the end of the day the core products perform really really similarly of course we're definitely due for a large update on the iphone 5 probably coming up pretty soon and a even more larger change on the ios platform running the iphone operating system so but other than that guys make sure you're subscribed to majid saya 2 in order to get all of our latest videos we're also going to be rooting the samsung galaxy s4 pretty soon so make sure you're stay tuned for that tutorial coming up very soon. But again, thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.